What up, what up, what up, Night Nation? It's your boy, Stevie Knight. About to get on one of these things, you feel me? What's good with my Patreon family? What's cracking with y'all, man? Hey, y'all, uh, we're going to do a little different today. Do something a little different today, man. Uh, y'all know, y'all know, y'all don't know, but today is the, it's been, today is officially one year since uh, we lost Kobe. You know what I'm saying? No, I was actually contemplating whether or not I wanted to do something to like bring some acknowledgement, so something from me for Kobe to y'all. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'll be the first to say I was never the biggest Kobe fan. I, I respected the man's greatness, but I was never a Kobe fan. I despised Kobe because he always gave whoever I was rooting for problems. I'm a I'm a Georgia boy. You know what I'm saying? So for the majority of Kobe's time that I was like fully engaged in basketball. I've always been an East Side boy, East Coast boy. So I was always with the I was always with the Bostons. I was and then, you know, I'm a diehard LeBron fan. So I've been from with LeBron since 2003. So of course I'm going, you know what I'm saying, be, you know, siding with the East Side cuz that's I mean, LeBron's over to Cleveland. It's different now cuz LeBron's over to LA, but that's not there no there. But, you know what I'm saying, as I'm as I as I go through my thoughts, as I you know gather my thoughts about things and the the effect Kobe had on me, I came to like understand that the reason the reason why I despised Kobe so much because he was so fucking great. I never really had a a, a reason to navigate through those thoughts until he passed away. Because when he passed away, I did not expect for his death to rock me the way it did. You know what I'm saying? Like it was comparable for Nipsey for me, but in a different way because I fucked with Nipsey. Like that was the one death that I identified with the most because Nipsey was a part of my day every fucking day. So when that shit happened, that shit hurt. That shit hurt. And I knew it was going to hurt when I found out the motherfucker got shot. When Kobe died, I did not expect that shit to hit me the way it hit me, man. That shit rocked me. I was like, and the reason why it rocked me so much because I had a relationship with Kobe because I despised the man so much because he was so great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I compare it to like when you watch a movie, right? Watching a movie and there's a character in that movie that gets on your fucking nerves. Either they're like a, like they're just a bad person in that shit. They annoy you or whatever the fuck. And if 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 an actor can get that response out of you, that means that actor is doing a great job of playing that fucking role to piss you off and make you feel a type of way. Like if, if it didn't if it didn't move you like in a negative way or a positive way, that means it's a terrible actor. The reason why Kobe pissed me off and I didn't like the motherfucker so much because he was so fucking good, man. And oh, those those heights of like emotional roller coasters you would go through with games, you know involving this motherfucker he was the source he was the reason why you know what i'm saying so like i when he passed away i came to realize that man and now that rocked me heavily because i didn't even know that was taking place i didn't even know i was having a relationship with this fool for me for me like i mean you know what i'm saying when i say have a relationship where everybody had a relationship with their athletes but i didn't even i didn't i wasn't even aware that this was occurring this was this was taking place you know what I'm saying? Until he passed away. And I was like, damn, damn, that shit, that shit rocked me. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it hurt. So like today is it marks a year that 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 <laughs> that that happened, that I felt that way, that I went through those thoughts when I really like when I really dug down and determined why I was feeling the way I was feeling, because all that shit came because of Kobe being so great. All the, you know, and you see all the snippets of you know his mentality about things, the black, the black mama mentality, like that, that psychotic, crazy, like competitor shit that he got, that Jordan shit. That's that Kobe shit. You know what I'm saying? And that was all the reasons why that 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 <laughs> that, that motherfucker is that motherfucker, man. So, um, like going back, I've, I've you know have had discussions with people through through social media about like what I should do or what type of things um, I should say or whatever. And I I really didn't know what I want to do. I, first, I was like, well. We'll, t we'll t go back and watch when he dropped 81 points, but then someone sent me a compilation of Kobe stories that happened, and I, I watched a, a few minutes of it, and I was like, damn, this this is dope. So this is what I chose to go with. It's actually someone else on YouTube made this fucking compilation. Uh, if you want to, uh, his, his, he go by the name of Nick Smith. I'll leave a link to the original shit so you can go check his shit out because he definitely did a lot of fucking work putting this shit together. You know, I don't want to just steal his shit and act like it's mine. And I definitely didn't put this shit together, but I'm going to use this shit to bring some acknowledgement. And I want to see, I want to see. The few moments of what I did see, I was not aware of. So I was like, all right, this is dope. This is dope. So, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man, that's all, that's all need to be said, man. Look, hey, 
Kobe Knight here. We're going to try to, we're going to just bring some acknowledgement and celebrate him while he was here. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Bye. You know, when guys are on the court out there, and I've asked a number of the guys this, are you guys uh, talking stuff to each other when you're out there playing and competing? Mm, sometimes. Let's the rest of the script. All right, let's see. Get your hands off me. Oh, oh. All right, yeah. And some of it, I think, is is that he emulated some of the things that MJ did as well, because MJ was a terror in practice. Yeah, he was hard on his teammates. He was hard on his teammates. It was the first time, you know, you look at somebody and you can't tell if he's looking at you. Like, he's looking dead at me, but I'm like, I don't know if he sees me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just, like, not relevant enough for him, but he couldn't see me, and I felt it. You know what I mean? And when you want to talk about the swagger, oof. I mean, Kobe had it, but as a competitor, I knew that Kobe was the one for me that I had. If I wanted to be great, that I had to get on the level of Kobe Bryant. Mm. The entire crowd was watching him, you know? Like, that's that's the re that's the reach that he had. Tech, he had a great game. Did you? He just went off the whole fourth quarter. Every once in a while, we, you would see we, flashes. Yeah, then he would say some shit, then it, the whole room was like, I still couldn't stop it, and I knew what he was about to do over and over and over again, you know? And that's just, that's a part of his greatness, man. Yeah, look at him. You know what? That's, that's what he does. this time. Look at this Relishes shit. it. 500,000. And he and Gerald Wallace are having a conversation. That's Kobe and Gerald Wallace going at each other. <laughs> Bro, you see his face, 500 grand, you gonna take that bet. <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. You see his face like, dog. That was the dumbest bet you could have taken in your life, bro. Wallace are having a conversation. That's hard. That's Kobe and Gerald Wallace going at each other. While Kobe's on the free throw line. Gerald's still talking to him. They're still talking to him. They're still having a conversation. As Kobe's about to shoot the biggest free throw. Nice. Three-point game. 4.8 to play. Rumor has it. The story where Kobe was playing against the 76ers and Andre Iguodala had done a great job on him. Held him to like 7 for 20 shoot. Mm. So he literally went. When they went back to Philadelphia, mm. he had that date marked on his calendar. So he came to the locker room and he was like, uh, where's Dre? I was on the court working out, getting ready for the game. And uh, it was Lewis Williams. It was like, uh, he told Lewis Williams, he said, tell Dre 50 tonight. So I come out to the locker room and Lou Williams was like, yo, Dre, Dre, Kobe said 50 tonight. I'm, like, I'm always ready to play against Kobe, so I'm like, okay, it's a pretty good matchup. Excited about it. So six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, he has 49. <laughs> And he just sucked out. So he, he got 49 with six minutes to go. The game was over. So that was an uh, interesting night. Uh, I actually went back and. And Andre is a fucking defensive monster, bro. That's lit. That's lit, dog. That's lit, bro. Uh, I tracked that game. He made like three threes from like, where it says Staple on the side of the court. He made like three threes from like the P in Staples, which was like far. So uh, yeah, and then we got a lot of pick and roll action. I'll never forget that game. Mm. The stories, I remember at USA Basketball, uh, first practice, you know, he was like, he looked like, like, I don't want to say old, but he looked like, I was like, man, am I seeing like the end, you know, it's like he's starting to decline. I, I didn't tell anybody that, I would never say that out loud. <laughs> but I was just thinking in my head, you know, because he just wasn't moving, you know, as, as, as well as, as he was. He's missing a lot of shots middle of summer so whatever but then i found out he had gone on like a 40 mile bike ride at like 11 p.m that night got in at like 2 a.m and then he was in the weight room when i got down there at 7 30 so you know it was, <laughs> it, it was just it was funny to me very fitting to me i was like in my head i was too scared to say it to anybody else but i was like man am i seeing like the decline i was like oh no he's just worked out for 40 hours straight <laughs> Uh, I heard a story about early on in your career. You wore them. Obviously, you've been wearing them since the 12th grade. When you played against Kobe, did you wear his shoes or did you wear a different shoe? So, so early on, I remember, I remember who said something to me. Uh, I want to, I want to, I'm going to ask Vince if you remember this. I remember Vince. Vince was like, when you play against Kobe, do you wear his shoes? I'm like, no, I, I haven't yet. I'm like, why? Like, nah, you you know, supposed to wear them like your opponent, opponent's shoe or blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so the next time I played cold, I wore some Jordans. It's the wrong fucking bang I should have did. As soon as I walked on the court, as soon as I walked on the court, Cole was like, oh, that's what we doing, motherfucker? 
and didn't say nothing to me the rest of the game. Right? Hey, hey, you just <laughs> sounded so much like him right there when he said that. I'm That's what we doing, my boy. Yeah, you sounded just like Kobe right there, dude. That's crazy as hell. He was, he was off right you, huh? He was off. Did oh, he play bush your ass, ass too? What? Man. <laughs> and that game, I swear to God, you can find a game too, bro. I remember I had hit one of somebody hit a shot, put us up like one. This, they called a timeout in front of our bench. This mm-hmm. motherfucker walked past our bench while we was in the huddle said, you left me too much time. Oh! Came out with fucking game winner, right? Mm. So I was like, man. Bars, bro! <laughs> bro, that is so hard, dog. That's hard as fuck, bro. He said, hey, you left me too much time, bro. That is hard, bro. That's hard as fuck, bro. Hard as fuck, dog. Huh. Mm-hmm. Hold on, say it again. Hit a shot. How he walked away? You can find a game too, bro. I remember I had hit one of somebody hit a shot, put us up like one. This they called a timeout in front of our bench. This motherfucker walked past our bench while we was in the huddle. Said you left me too, too much, much time. time. Mm-hmm. Came out, hit the fucking game winner, right? Cash. Um, so I was like, man. So after the game, talked to him. He was like, like, damn, man, my bad. You know, blah blah blah. That's what's up. That's a that's a crazy ass story. That's what's up. Yeah, that's I don't what we think, do. Yeah, I don't think I never yeah. told that. Yeah. Um, yeah, nah, but right. hey, 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 I swear to God that was him when you said it, because he didn't said that plenty yeah. of times. That shit was crazy. Man. We were in the Olympics, right? And this is when I knew Kobe was a monster, though. Mm. You hear about it. You hear about it, but you really if you don't see it, you really, really don't know. And so we get into a city, uh, one of the cities very late. And immediately we all go to the gym, you know. All my guys is you know, it's Melo, it's B, it's Bron, it's Kobe. Like we all go to the gym, we all get our work in. It's re- it's real late. And so after we get done getting our work in, me and my guys, we say, hey, like let's meet for breakfast in the morning. Like if you can't sleep, whoever first one wake up, hit us up. We gonna go eat. And so we do that. We probably get like three hours of sleep. You can't sleep much when you're traveling across the world. You know, like we were traveling, and we get probably get like three hours of sleep. And we we wake up, we go down to where the food is. As we walking down, you know, slubbing with, with sleep in our eyes, Kobe Bryant is sitting there with ice on his knees already, right? So we walk up to Kobe, we like, Kobe, what, what's up? And he was like, oh yeah, man, I just finished, uh, finished the workout and uh, I'm about to go do another one. And at that moment, I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> we just worked out about three hours ago. You Gotta know what I mean? Right, and like, you've done another workout and you about to go do another one? That's when I was like, okay, I gotta get my stuff together. I gotta get my shit together. Because this dude right here is on a whole different level uh, than even I'm on. And I'm supposed to be great, right? Mm. So that's the kind of... You said this man is on a whole different level than I'm on. And I'm supposed to be great. That's D-Way talking. I don't know when that happened. I don't know if that's fucking, uh, what, 2006, 2005, uh, Dwayne Wade, when he won that chip. That's that monster, Dwayne Wade. But regardless, that's hard kind of person he was and that's how he drove me you know what i mean like this little stuff like that i went back and said okay that means i gotta work hard and i gotta do more uh so yeah i just wanted to share that little end of that's the great way. he's a beast man he he had a lot of respect for guys who busted their butts you know every single day being if they were very talented or not but if you came to work every single day and you didn't bag down to him because he would test you you know, that's the one thing I loved about it. He would right. test guys in practice. How would he test them? Oh, elbowing them, uh, talking to them, you know, telling them they can't guard him. You know, you got this guy out here and this guy can't hold my jock. You know, mm-hmm. but I mean, he would talk so much stuff it, it, and he would really just to see how you're going to react to it. Question the rest of the script. All right, Get your hands off me. Oh, oh. Right, yeah. You know, uh, and, and some of it I think is is that he emulated some of the things that MJ did as well, because MJ was a terror in practice. Yeah, yeah. He was hard, on, hard, yeah, he was hard on his teammates. Yeah. Fucking hard you ain't got that for. You think what you ain't talking about? Come on, man. You know what? I got a skin of you all day. That's my fault. You know, and, and you know, I, you know, even the last two years I had him here, you know, uh, I wouldn't allow him to practice much, but there was days where he was like, well, B, B let me just scrimmage. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that sounds good. So, you know, we're going to scrimmage at about this time. Come on back out, you know, get yourself back loose and I'm going to let you scrimmage. And he would be in the scrimmage talking mm, the man. whole time to guys, to Nick Young and to Jeremy Lenz and Carlos Boozers and just. And I would sit there sometimes and say, guys, you're not going to say nothing back. What started that back and forth, though? Um, it was like it was like a testing day for Kobe to test like Jeremy Lenz, test 
me and Tess, like Wesley Johnson and yeah. other guys. So, like, from the start, he was killing Jeremy Lin. Like, I guess he wanted Jeremy Lin to be something he wasn't, but he was killing him from the start of the practice. I don't know why we got him. Why is he here? Um, he had one good year talking crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, but during the practice, I'm up here like Jeremy Lin. Come on, man. You can't let this, you can't go out like this. We ain't going out like this. Good. Not today. <laughs> I'm getting mad like German come on man. Kobe, y'all soft like Sherman. Oh, I can't even get better practicing with y'all. And he would do it to just see which of these guys he could be in that foxhole with. That's when I was like, all right, Cole, you talking too much. You can't guard me. Guard, stop guard me. Ah. He was guarding Jeremy Lin. Guard me. Oh. Yeah, guard hey, me. Hey, 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 that part. Yeah, guard me. And then we start going back and forth. I said nobody in the world could guard me because Gil was where teaching me. Talk your shit, boy. <laughs> nobody in the world. <laughs> Nobody in the world can guard me. Kobe say you lucky. I'm not from this world. <laughs> Let's go, motherfucker. Let's go, motherfucker. Because I said nobody in the world could guard oh, me. Oh, you said lucky. Lucky I'm not from this world. Damn. <laughs> I ain't good, so, bro. He Damn. So we going back and forth. It was fun. Then the next Damn. day, you know, we, we won and won a game. And he was like, Praising us and all that type of shit. I love the when you waved them off. I think it was against the Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the game. That was right after that. Oh, it that was? was right after that. In, that, in the about. interview, I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> I said yeah. about the Sherman tissue or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, from the yesterday practice, you know, Kobe talking all that trash kind of uh, inspired me today. So, but <laughs> yeah, you like Sherman. Yeah. But I feel like crazy respect crazy. Like Nick's got that mentality. <laughs> yeah, that like yo. I'm gonna still shoot. I'm gonna play my game, that. and Kobe understands that. I don't even think he's hoping no you more. Know, which of these guys I can uh-huh. trust to have my back when I'm on the it court? It's a with. test. It's a test. Yeah. And he was always, you know, you know, testing guys to in that way to try, try to find out, you know, which of these guys I can trust and, and go to battle with. Now Young with two lets it fly. It's good. Nick Young for three. Mm. And the Lakers lead with 7.4 remaining. Young sixth. Triple of the night. Like, we had a... Fuck, he gonna be mad at me for this. But look, we had a blowout. <laughs> <laughs> we got blew out in, uh, in Portland. We was getting blew out in, um, in Portland. I don't even remember Lou playing for uh, LA. Damn. So everybody... Um, Kobe's in the locker room just waiting for everybody to come in. And you know everybody down there got Kobe's on the team, so... Yeah. He come in... And he came in the locker room and he was like, from now on out, every time down the court, I touch the ball. Y'all gonna <laughs> learn what it's like to play with Kobe Bean fucking Brian. How y'all gonna wear these shoes and y'all soft thing? What we do here in LA? So I'm not thinking nothing of it. Bro, he said, how y'all gonna fucking wear these? How y'all gonna wear my shoes and y'all soft? Y'all out here fucking soft as fuck. Take my goddamn shoes off. <laughs> he tells everybody to take their shoes off. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> <fucking serious. laughs> it's a dead ass serious. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, nah, take them off. Take them off. And so Nick Young play for last. We go, we shower and shit, we come back. And y'all did? And we took them off. Man. Man. <laughs> did y'all throw them in the middle of like the... Uh, in the middle of the pile. Like, he <laughs> all, he just started grabbing people's shoes and just throw them, he threw them all in the trash. Oh, and wow. He's like, y'all don't deserve these. We shower and shit, we come back. Nick walk in the locker room talking about huh, y'all better throw that motherfucker the ball or it's gonna be some shit around here. So, like Nick never took anything serious though. <laughs> Which y'all start coming with, with, yeah, come back in LeBron's and stuff right. like that. What'd y'all say? Did I'm anyone say like, that? I ain't gonna wear those anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. But we just got the shit kicked out of us and Cold wasn't going for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I just think mentally, like, he meant that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just think at that point, his body just didn't give him what he wanted. I guarded Kobe in the garden, which I can't remember how much he had, but I knew I had multiple steals against him to where in the game, all, in my head, all I'm thinking of is when I have this conversation with my brother after the game, how I'm going to tell him how I stole a ball from Kobe. How I stripped Kobe before he was finna take a shot. How I drove by Kobe and got a dunk. Like I'm thinking about all these things in my head. I'm like so geek. I had my few steals against him. I thought I was killing it. I was having that out of body experience. Like, yes. like, let me appreciate. This is amazing. Right, we in the garden. They going crazy. I got my player editions on. I just stole that thing from Kobe. Like. You know what I mean? Lynn Sanity was going on. Like, Wait, was just... this the Friday night game in the garden, the Lynn Sanity remember. game? It might have been. Fourth quarter starts. <laughs> <laughs> and Kobe said, You had a great game. <laughs> <laughs> you had a great game, yo, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. This motherfucker said, The fourth quarter starts, you had a great game. Like, the game ain't over, motherfucker. It's over for you, motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, yo, you, you had a great game, yo. Oh, uh, shit. But uh, I'm looking like, shit. bro, there's still another quarter. I'm look, I Man, swear I looked at the you. card like. It's over for you. But I'm looking like, it's 12 minutes. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, what you, what was that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't said nothing the whole game. I've been talking shit. I done stole the ball. I'm hyped as hell. It's Kobe Bryant. He ain't said not one word to me. Game, fella. You know, locked in. The man come down. You remember he came, shot fake, shot fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what you on? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you been regular all game. <laughs> shot. Get to the spot, shot fake, spin, pivot over here, spin back on the foot, drop it off the glass. I'm like, bro, what's going on? Wow. Then he pulled up from like 35 feet on some Steph Curry shit before yep. Steph was doing that. <laughs> he pulled up and laced it. I'm like, they called a timeout. Dan Tony looking at me. I'm like, bro, I ain't. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I guard everything, bro. I ain't. Nah, bro, I guarded the first two moves. He ain't supposed to have a third counter like that. <laughs> like, bro, I stopped the first one, stopped the second one, bro. The third one wasn't what on the I film. Yeah, it I wasn't do? on the film, bro. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I, don't, I thought that was a travel. His feet shouldn't even be able to move. <laughs> one point, he just dribbled up, you know, just picked a spot and just shot it dead in my face. Like, everything I was doing, I was just like, and I'm thinking in my head, Damn, that whole like good game I thought I was having is just gone. I'm trying to speak to Kobe for another two years. Oh my he humbled his ass. <laughs> humbled his ass. My Kobe story is we, we were in the player lounge. There was a couple of us um, and we were playing spades and he kind of came in and we were drinking a little wine, playing some spades, just chilling. And he came in, sat down, poured himself a glass and he was kind of like reading a paper. So this is 2008. So they had just lost to the Celtics mm. in the finals, like mm. tragically, if memory serves. And so he opens up the paper and there's like this article about it. And <laughs> there's a picture of Paul Pierce. So I see it, we kind of are, and you know, like it's Kobe Bryant. Listen, it's 2008, we're all sitting there. Fuck Kobe Bryant sits down and pours a glass of wine. We're like, what the fuck, <laughs> you know? And then we look over and he's tearing out the picture of Paul <laughs> Pierce. So he cuts it out and he folds it up, he puts it in his pocket. And like, we're all looking at him, you know, like what's, what's going on? He's like, motivation. We're like, oh, cool. <laughs> and then he proceeded to like chug his wine, pour another glass, chug it, pour the third. And he was like, basically like, <laughs> he looks over and he's like, now I'm one ahead of you guys. We we're like, okay. <laughs> that is great. That is such a great story. I. So when I hear those stories about Kobe and I hear them from so many people, I'm like, yo, was he really like, was some of it? Uh, performance art yeah. like some of it was like I've got to I've got to live up to this reputation like who does that <laughs> could he have not torn that piece of paper out in his own room and put it in his pocket he wanted someone to know yeah right exactly <laughs> Jordan's with the Washington Wizards mm -hmm. and they play in Washington Jordan beats Kobe mm, about Jordan one. gets that win Kobe was guarding him and he did something because uh, Jordan made the last play, made like a pass yeah, and yeah, they, yeah, they hit yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah. Mm. At the end of the game, he smacks Kobe on the butt and said, you can put the shoes on, but you ain't gonna never feel them. The eight, yeah. Yeah, the eight, right? yeah. yeah. You're never gonna, you're never gonna feel them. You're never Damn. gonna feel these shoes. Kobe 
stop talking to his teammates. Damn. They say Kobe didn't talk to the team for two weeks. Mm. For two weeks. Literally would not say anything to anybody. Like he just went silent, silent. but he was he was on one million. And when they, they talked to Phil Jackson, the teammates were like, what's, what's going on, what's going on? He's so they said, Phil, what's up with Kobe? He, he mad at us? It was like, nah, he ain't mad at you. Well, Jordan told him that comment and it upset him. Mm. In Washington, it's like, in what? Two weeks ago? He's like, yeah, he told him, uh, he can copy him all he won't and do all that, but he'll never fulfill those shoes. Fucking Jordan ass. So they already knew what was, what was coming. So then the Wizards came to Los Angeles to play. Hey, they was like, yeah, I feel sorry for you. Uh, Bruh, you? It's, you hear, it's the same stories that you heard on the fucking, uh, the Jordan documentary, bruh. The last, the last dance, the same type, the same type shit where Jordan will not let some shit go and come back and fire that ass up. <laughs> bruh, Kobe is doing that for, to Jordan, bruh. <laughs> Kobe is doing that to Jordan. Literally the same shit. He fucking said that shit. That shit lit a fire up with the Kobe ass. He about, apparently he about to do the same shit. Light Jordan ass up. Bruh, that's, that's hard talk. That's hard. Bruh. I never seen no shit. I never heard no shit like that, bruh. You, he, doing that to, he doing that shit to the source. You do that shit to the source. All right, bro. You taste your own medicine right here. Here you go. You shouldn't have said that shit to me. You shouldn't have said that shit to me, dog. I didn't know he was doing it like that, dog. Damn. Hey, they was like, yeah, I feel sorry for uh, next time we play Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> Kobe scored 42 points in the first half. Damn. Bro, I, I got. I wish I could know what the fuck was going on in Michael Jordan's mind, dog. I wish that that's got to be a humbling type of experience for the most alpha, as cockiest motherfucker that he is, dog. You gonna say the most alpha, cockiest shit to that motherfucker? And he gonna turn around and make you feel the same exact way, but through his play and got them forty two points in the first half, my dog. <laughs> forty two points in the first half, my dog. On Jordan? I bet I bet he was dicking Jordan too. Dick Jordan probably defending his ass. He dropped 42 on his head in the first half, bro. Woo! Woo! D don't nobody talk about shit like that with Jordan. You don't ever hear those stories come up. Woo! Damn, bro. This, this need to be heard by the world. Jordan, oh, 23 consecutive points scored by Kofi. 30 points in the game. That was a nice looking That's that's that Jordan. That's Jordan's mouth. <laughs> and scored 55 points in that game. Mm. They said they already knew Damn, that's what tough. was about to happen Fucking right. against MJ when MJ came to mm. LA. Wow. And they said, sure enough, mm. Kobe went out and that motherfucker said, I like it, it, it wasn't whatsoever. He didn't even have to tell the team once they heard they knew what happened. That's hard. Is what that's hard. Kobe decided to do. That's hard. On Jordan. Which a lot of people don't say. That's hard. That's 42 in the first half. Never yeah. hear no shit like Game that. Game 55. Bro, you can see Mike's face in the end. Now that explains it. But they said. Mike with the towel. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It was what was told to him. Yeah. He's a psycho. <laughs> Jordan, you did it to yourself, dog. You did it to yourself, bro. Don't pull that shit right here, dog. Don't pull that shit right here, bro. <laughs> that's what I said. He's, he's a psycho. psycho. That's what was told to him. Do you remember the reality show, The Real World? Yes. That used to be on M MTV? Yeah. Uh, Kobe was a rookie. Arn was my agent as well. And I was the elder statesman of the firm. And Arn called me up and was like, you know, do, you want, do you mind talking to this young kid and show him what the NBA is all about and how to conduct yourself? I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll talk to this, this kid. We were set to play a game of basketball versus the world, the real world cast. Mm. It was shot in Hollywood. That's and real all world I Boston. Is Gail That's the side of to say to me, look, when you guys get there, you're going to get there before the cast of Real World. All Kobe wants to do is play you one on one. He just wants to play you one on one, one on one, one on one. I'm like, look, I'm 10 years in. This is 96, 97 year that summer. So he had one year in. So I'm 10 years in. I'm not going to play this young cat one-on-one. -on -one. I'm like, 
All right, I'll play a soft game of one-on-one versus them, but our focus should be going against the real world cast. <laughs> so we get there, and we're playing soft one-on-one, and, you know, I'm doing my step-back jumper. I know you've alluded to this before. And he's like, how do you do that move? And, I, you know, I kind of show him because I was trying to take things from him as well. He had this killer crossover. I'm like, wow, well, how do you do that? So we're exchanging our go-to moves. Well, a conversation turned into text messages and phone calls every day. Because, like you said, he was gathering information. We reached the Bulls in the conference finals, and he was like, so what was it like what, going to get Jordan? He wanted to be bigger than life. And at that time, that person bigger than life, and still is, is Michael Jordan. And I didn't have a very strong relationship with MJ. But Kobe wanted to know what was all the intricate talking and trash talking and moves that were going on between MJ and I. This motherfucker is doing, I wouldn't even say counterintelligence. This motherfucker is just, you know, doing intelligence, bro. He's gathering intel on MJ. The motherfucker be better than this motherfucker. I want to know all this shit, all his secrets, all his quirks, all that. That's all, bro. That's, 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 that's that competitive shit to a whole different level, bro. That's not even competitive, dog. That's just, that's just fucking dictator-like. Bro, I ain't what you call that. I ain't what you call that, bro. Tell me what the fuck happened between y'all two so I know how to either be better than this motherfucker or because I know he the one. He's the one. You got to go against him. What's going to make it easier for me to take that motherfucker out? I don't know if he wanted to do it to fucking take Jordan out or just be up on Jordan's or be up at Jordan's level. But either way, bro, that's hard because Kobe just entered the NBA thinking like that. Just entering into the NBA thinking like that, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, dog. Psychotic. What did you do? Like, where were your game plans? What was this? I was like, man, this that black cat, there was no answer for him, man. We tried this, we tried that. That black cat was doing this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, what does this kid want to know about all this MJ talk for? Mm. There's only one black cat. You know, I kept, cause I referred to call Michael, Michael Jordan or Jordan. I always called him the black cat. Mm. It's like the black cat was, you know, we were doing this and I'm talking to Kobe. And I'm like, Kobe. He's like, you know what? He's like, you know what? Well, you better get ready for the caramel cat mm. because he's coming. <laughs> so before the black mamba, before the black mamba, his nickname was the caramel cat. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking, <laughs> this, this young 17 year old, I'm 17. talking about the greatest ever. He says, You're going to refer to me as the caramel cat. Now just think about how it was for these, these, these elder men, these statesmen in the NBA who are just getting blasted by MJ every year, year after year after year. And then they have this 17 year old kid, <laughs> this young ass whippersnapper, say, nah, I'm, I, That's going to be me. They're not taking that shit serious at all. You know what I'm saying? And then fast forward it now, looking and seeing what Kobe's done, bro. So he had the mental fortitude from day one. Then he had the, not even fortitude, bro. Like you can you can have you can have the fortitude, but you still have to be talented enough to fucking make that shit happen. Like you being confident is one thing, but to actually be talented enough to pull that shit off is a whole different thing. And he had both of the best to fucking do that shit, bro. Like then this motherfucker dropped forty two on MJ. <laughs> After MJ tried to clown him. Woo! That's hard, dog. That's hard, bro. That's different. That's different, bro. That's how much confidence he had. Damn. Back then. This is like one year into his. He's Damn. like, well, you better get. Wow. Forget the black cat. You better get ready for the caramel cat. <laughs> Damn. And I thought about it. I'm like, fast forward two or three years later. It was 2 1. And then game four that you mentioned. You fouled out. I'm thinking, you know, you already had 50 and 25. Great. That's a loose ball foul on Shaq. That'll be number six. What oh, and they playing Reggie. Three years later in the NBA Finals, that same move mm -hmm. that I was showing him in my step back, <laughs> he hit in game three after Shaq fouled out. Reggie, he fucking took his own move and did it to him to close the shit out, bro. Oh, hell no, bro. This motherfucker. This motherfucker, dog. That's detail, bro. That is detail. That is like, bro. That's like insane. The fucking all right. <laughs> I'm sitting here 
getting all this information from you when I first entered the league and you're not taking me seriously. You're telling me all that shit. Fast forward three years down the road, I'm doing this shit you just taught me in your fucking mouth, brother. When the whole shit, man. This ain't. You know, that same move that I was showing. That is so calculated and menacing, bruh. That's calculated, menacing mamba shit, dog. Bruh. Bruh. Hey, that's hard, dog. That's hard. That's hard. It's like some movie shit. I mean, my step back, he hit in game three after Shaq fouled out. Reggie Miller, the marquee matchup we talked about. Look at Reggie Miller squaring him up. These two guys played one on one all summer in LA. Kobe takes it between his legs. He pulls it back, hits the jumper, and then sort of gives it, you know, take your time. Everything's cool. As he's running down the court, pats me on the button, says, You never should have showed me that step back. I'm going to kill this young kid. I'm going to kill this young kid. Damn, dog. Bro, I ain't know, I ain't know, I ain't know, I ain't know none of that shit. I have not heard why stories like that kept under the fucking radar, bro. That took that Jordan shit, that Jordan shit. He did some Jordan shit back on Jordan, bro. Oof, that's hard, man. That's hard, bro. So, yeah, man. Kobe, Kobe was different, bro. It's different, dog. Different, especially like I said before. For me, I wasn't even fan to. The, I wasn't even fan of the motherfucker. I mean, I'm gonna say, it. yeah, I wasn't a fan of him because. I respected him, but I wasn't a fan of him, but I somehow grew this monstrosity, I somehow grew this crazy ass admiration of him and wasn't even aware that I was growing it during the time when I was growing it, bro. Like I said, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like to have that. To, and he wasn't even playing. He was retired by the, when that shit happened, bro. But to go back and go through all the memories you've had with this motherfucker, like going back and forth, debating with your friends, you know what I'm saying? Watching games, him ripping your fucking heart out. You just despising this motherfucker because he's that goddamn great. And you got to go against him, man. I, there's nobody else in the league that I have to that that I, that that that, that's, that has had that amount of influence on the world. You know what I'm saying? With the whole Mamba mentality type of shit. To have those to to have those to have that to have that grasp and that, you know, those claws in the world. No, I don't think anybody else has that like Kobe. Like there's other fucking athletes, of course, that get on my fucking nerves. Still get on my fucking nerves, but it's not gonna be to the impact of of Kobe, bro. It's not. It's not. You know what I'm saying? There's a theme that goes with Kobe. That that mamba shit, that nasty, tenacious fucking shit that they talk about throughout this thing man and that shit is just is more apparent it's more apparent to me than ever was before after he was gone i did not realize it until after he was gone you know what i'm saying so i have that and that i feel like that it means a lot to me just because he was not my focus he was not my focus but he for, he forced my hand to respect him you know what i'm saying and forced that and that relationship just naturally occurred just because the back and forth that he and i have for me you know what i'm saying with me so yeah man yeah, man, just wanted to uh, do that, bro. Um, I'm sure a lot of y'all motherfuckers, I've already seen a lot of that shit. I had no idea. And for those of y'all who hadn't seen it, hey, man, yeah, buddy was different, but y'all know that, man. So, yeah, uh, you know, R.I.P. Kobe, man. R.I.P. G.G., man. That shit, that's just, it's just crazy, bro. It's crazy how that shit happened. All that shit went down. We're not going to not gonna focus on all that, all that, all that tragedy, man. We're going to focus on what he did while he was here, bro. And that means shit. What he did, that was crazy. That was crazy, man. So hopefully y'all enjoyed that, man. And uh, yeah, I'm out.